Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we are going to solve this lovely little algebraic word problem. Okay, so I know a lot of people get alarmed when they have to do uh, word problems in mathematics, especially algebra word problems. But what you have to do is simply just practice. And of course, you need to know the sub skills here. But let's go and take a look at this uh, particular problem and see if you can figure it out. So it says, seven times the difference of a number and five is 12. What is the number? So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Of course, I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then we're going to walk through the steps to solve this particular problem. I don't want to give you too many hints right now because I'm going to give you a full opportunity to solve this all on your own. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go take a look at the answer and then we'll, get to, uh, we'll go ahead and get into the solution. But what we are dealing with here is basic algebra. This is kind of a problem that you would see uh, certainly like at the pre-algebra and algebra one level. But let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The question, of course, is what is the number? Seven times the difference of a number and five is 12. What is this number? This number happens to be 47 over 7. Okay. Of course, if you took 47 and divided by 7 and got some decimal value, you can kind of judge for yourself whether you got this right. But if you figure this out, that's outstanding. Let's go and give you a nice little happy face and a plus a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you were able to conquer a nice algebra word problem. They'll be so impressed with that information. They might even take you out to lunch or dinner. Who knows, right? Should always try to get as much, uh, you know, for your success. So don't be afraid to brag about your math success because it is a big deal if you can do these type of problems, okay? At least for me, right? A lot of you are like, yeah, who cares? You know, I just want to pass my class. Well, I get it too. But listen, get in the habit of celebrating your successes. Now, if you didn't get this right, well, that's an opportunity for you to learn something. And what do we need to learn for this particular problem? Well, really the essence here of this problem is translating, okay? We need to translate a verbal uh, sentence, okay, or a paragraph, right? We're taking words, and we gotta translate this into algebra, okay, or a variable expression. So that's really the main idea. We're just simply translating, just if we were gonna translate from one language to another language, like English to Spanish or vice versa. So here we gotta take words and we gotta translate them into uh, numbers and variables, okay? So let's take a look at some of the words here that could, you know, uh, give students confusion, but let's just take it one one at a time, okay? So seven times. So what is this right here? Times, well, we are talking about multiplication, right? Pro a product of something. So we're gonna be multiplying. This is three times seven, right? Or the product of three and seven. So that we're talking about multiplication here. So hopefully you understood that. But here is a word that could give a lot of students problems. So the difference, okay? So the difference of a number and five. Well, the difference, this has really a specific meaning here, okay, or definition. So A minus B, this is, this is the difference of A and B, okay? The difference of A and B is A minus B. So A goes first and B goes second, okay? So B minus A is not the difference of A and B, all right? So if I said, find the difference of three and five, that's three minus five, not five minus three. So when it comes to uh, the difference or subtraction, you got to be very, very careful, okay? So hopefully I didn't make any errors there, but again, the difference of a number and five, this number is first and this five is second. So if I said the difference again of 10 and three, okay, would be 10 minus three. Again, this whatever is um, uh, first in this sentence is gonna be first right here, all right? Of course, 10 minus three is a positive seven. Three minus 10 is a negative seven. So the order has a huge impact on your answer. So anytime you're dealing with the difference, you're dealing with subtraction and you gotta be on extra alert. Now, that's not the case when you're dealing with addition or sums, okay? But with difference, absolutely. Okay, so we gotta be really careful about that word. 
So seven times the difference of a number and five is 12. So a number, okay, what number? Well, we don't know what a number is, but we can always use algebra. So we'll have uh, a uh, variable represent a number. Of course, you can see I'm going to have that variable be, uh, variable be equal to n. You can use any number or any variable like x, y doesn't make a difference. But a kind of a good habit is when you're dealing with algebra word problems, if uh, you know, whatever variable, you know, if it's like a number, sometimes it's just kind of good to use a uh the letter that represents, you know, um, that that word, okay, or like the first um, uh, word or first letter of that particular word, okay. So if it's logical, like let's say I was looking for how many uh, ladders or something like that, right? So maybe I would let L be my variable or how many uh, widgets or whatnot, right? I would use a, the variable W. So it's kind of a good habit to get in. All right, so here we got seven times. We know what that means, difference. We know what that means, a number. We know what we're going to have N. So N and uh, the difference of a number and five is, so the next word we got to be uh, talking about here is the uh, word is. So every time you see the word is in an algebra or math word problem, that's always the equal sign. Okay, so is or is equal to. Of course, uh, we have 12. And then right here, what is the number? That's just basically saying, hey, uh, solve the problem. Okay, so we're going to be dealing with algebra. We're going to be dealing with an unknown ver uh, amount or unknown quantity here. So that means we're going to want to construct an equation. All right, and we can construct an equation because we have the word is here. Okay, we're going to have an equal sign. So we're going to translate uh, these this uh, sentence okay into an out an actual actual algebraic sentence or variable equation okay so now if you kind of get the idea go ahead and maybe write your uh, equation if you didn't do this but there's one little uh, thing here that we have to be super cautious about that a lot of students will make a mistake in but I'll wait to show you uh, uh, what this is in just one second. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this now. So now we know uh, what these words stand for. So we're going to uh, put down here, we're going to let n equal the number. Of course, you want to read your word problems more than once. You kind of read it at least three times to really make sure you understand the question. So we're going to let n is equal to the number. Now, when you're writing this down on a homework problem, a quiz test, whatever the case is, or you're just learning math, again, for the fun of it, Always get in the habit of defining your variables. Just don't start using variables. Make sure you say, hey, I'm going to let n equal this number right here. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. So the equation that we want to write is the following. 7, okay, parentheses, n minus 5 is equal to 12. So now here, what we don't have is parentheses, okay? So let me go ahead and explain this to you right now. So let me just say this. So this is going to be 7 times, this is going to be times, the uh, difference of a number and five, right? So let's go here. So this is the difference of a number and five. Let's just take this part right here, the difference of a number and five. Of course, the number is going to be n, right? So the difference of a number and five is n minus five. But notice here, I'm putting that in parentheses in my equation. So anytime you're dealing with a sum or difference in algebra, things like we have a variable expression and you're adding or subtracting something, always, always, always put pr grouping symbols, parentheses around those expressions. It's going to help you out big time. Matter of fact, if you didn't put this in, here's what a lot of students do. They'll just go like this, seven times the difference of a number and five. And so they'll just write their equation this way and they'll end up with seven N minus five. All right, which is going to be 100% wrong. So you got to put those parentheses in. And this is a little small detail that is not so obvious in these problems. All right, so let's go ahead and read this again. This is seven times, right? Because this means multiplication. I got this seven next to this. The difference of a number and five, okay? And of course, we have this nice and tidy in some grouping symbols is 12. All right, so make sure seven times the difference of a number and five is 12 what is the number well now what we need to do is solve for n so we're satisfied that we have the correct equation seven times the difference of a number in five is 12 so let's go ahead and solve for n so what do we need to do well we're going to do some basic algebra 
So first things here, we need to distribute that 7 to the n and 5, this negative 5, so that's going to be 7n minus 35. Now, again, if I didn't have these parentheses, you would not, well, you know, most students will forget to distribute that 7 to this 5. That's such a common error. So, um, you know, when I explain things in my uh, videos on my YouTube channel, okay, and in my full uh, math program, I really take the time to show you what's going on. Because if you can understand one problem really, really well, that means you're going to be able to do other problems nicely. I don't rush through problems. I could do these things one, one, two, three. That's not the point. I could do this stuff. The point is, can you do this stuff? I'm trying to help you learn how to do this stuff, right? And there's a lot of little subtleties that aren't so obvious that can make the difference between the a right and wrong answer. All right, so 7n minus 35 is equal to 12. So what do we need to do here? Well, we need to add 35 to both sides of the equation. When we do that, we get 7n is equal to 47. And to solve for n, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 7. Now, if you don't understand all this stuff right here, you need to kind of brush up on your basic equation solving in algebra. So this particular type of problem, if you're like, well, I'm still a little bit confused, I need some help or want some additional practice, I want to encourage you to check out like my pre-algebra course. That'd be a good course for you um, to kind of, you know, bolster your skills with what's going on in this particular problem. But this is a very, you know, common type of problem you're going to see in pre-algebra, algebra one to whatnot. So you've got to be able to, to translate verbal phrases into algebraic phrases. I mean, that is the essence of an algebra word problem, right? You're translating, you're, you're taking something in real life that's not algebra, and then you're going to, you know, create an algebraic expression or equation to model what's going on, and then you're going to solve for a particular vari variable or variables, okay? So you want to get used to deciphering these various uh, uh, words and letters, and especially these subtleties like using grouping symbols and parentheses, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so if this video helped you out or if it was just super exciting, make sure to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.